3 promises a decentralized future of the internet, built on the blockchain and Internet of Things technology. But what would that look like? And can it be done? Predicting how the internet's next chapter will unfold means re-exploring the web that came before. Web 1 began as a decentralized network connecting individual computers and servers. In the 1970s, the US government developed ARPANET as a communication system linking military command centers. Academic and research institutions soon joined the network and the internet was born as an open source environment, meaning anyone could freely build on it. By the 1990s, websites still had one basic function, displaying information. The first browsers were introduced, but at that time, advertising was banned, which seems hard to believe today. Web 2 is the internet as we know it now. It's a more interactive environment with social media and creator platforms, allowing users to post and interact with content. Web 2 ushered in the age of internet marketing and sales with mobile devices and enhanced broadband networks. In 1996, Steve Jobs made a visionary prediction in a Wired Magazine interview. The best way to think of the web is as a direct-to-customer distribution channel, whether it's for information or commerce. It bypasses all middlemen. The success of Amazon, eBay, and an increasingly digital shopping experience proved Jobs right. By 2012, e-commerce sales reached $1 trillion worldwide. With an advertising backbone, Meta, Alphabet, and many others have profited immensely from dominating social media, search platforms, and video streaming services. However, big tech has been criticized for violating user privacy, and that criticism has a price tag. EU data protection authorities have issued a total of $1.25 billion in fines since January 2021. Lawmakers and users alike continue to question how companies collect and share personal data. Some of the internet's founding fathers have even questioned if the web as it exists today can be the free and open forum that was promised. If you'd asked me 30 years ago where we'd be, I kind of would have hoped that we'd be using web tools effectively to promote and facilitate democracy. What we see now with the exploitation we saw with Cambridge Analytica, the spread of misinformation, the lack of accountability, the blocking and censorship by governments, this is not what we are seeing. Is Web3 the solution? Web3 aims to decentralize the internet and launch a more multidimensional and immersive environment called the metaverse, designed for even more participation by users. Blockchain technology is widely expected to change how information is shared and stored, providing verifiable, distributed data on peer-to-peer -peer nodes or servers that can enable the creation of new economic sectors and new forms of commerce. Theoretically, decentralized applications can transfer much of the power and control back to the public, making a shift to a more user-owned web. Peer-to-peer -peer buying and selling of assets, like NFTs, are just the beginning. The growing adoption of cryptocurrencies and ever-expanding mobile e-commerce have effectively cut the middlemen out of parts of the economy. Consider the transaction fees charged to retailers by credit card companies. The seemingly small 1% to 4% adds up, moving through the supply chain. The inefficiency of small transactions forces many companies to purchase in bulk and effectively shuts out smaller businesses. Advocates of DeFi or decentralized finance are lobbying and pitching for more personalized financial models and even a future without banks and centralized stock exchanges. Pioneers in the space include OpenSea, the most prominent digital marketplace for crypto collectibles and NFTs, Coinbase for buying, selling, and storing cryptocurrency, and Decentraland, a metaverse environment where users can meet, chat, play games, socialize, and attend events. Critics have already begun questioning some of the loftier ambitions of Web3 and warn of potential manipulation. Former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey criticized the Web3 space for the likelihood of being controlled by venture capitalists while appearing to be decentralized. You don't own Web3, the VCs and their LPs do. It will never escape their incentives. It's ultimately a centralized entity with a different label. Know what you're getting into. If Web2 is an example, Idealist projections can be tempered by market forces, industry leaders, and even politics. Can the dream of Web3 be realized? Or does the past already have the answer?